friends. Uh, welcome to the Silver Silk Tuesday Toots. This is a magical journey into the world of tutorials and jewelry making with me, uh, Neelay Patel. Um, I'm the owner, designer, and educator at Silver Silk and More, and my job is to bring you guys fun, inspirational ideas using Silver Silk and a few other materials that I love using from Jesse James Bead, Softflex Wire, Tiara Cast, Ventage. Oh gosh, I work. I like to work with a lot of people. It's always a fun, fun time. So uh, today I thought that I would sort of go off of what we made last week uh, and build on it. So we worked with Hollow Mesh and we worked to do a design. I had the bracelet. Oh, here it is. We made this bracelet together and um, I can see already our friends are popping in. Hey, Donna, I just saw you, uh, your name chime in a second ago. Julie's here. Hey, Mimi. Uh, good to see you on here, Leanne. I'm glad you could join in. Hey, Greta and Teresa are in the house. My lovely ambassador silkies. Um, and Rosalinda, it's good to he have you on here too. So I love this bracelet. I thought it was really fun, really easy to make. And um, I wanted to see what we could do with it if it were in sort of a necklace format. And I've got some other ideas for tonight because I didn't want to just, you know, put the hollow mesh on, on leather cord and call it good. I wanted to do something a little extra with it. And so and me and extra go together. <laughs> so um, yeah, I thought we could uh, make some tassels and connect some Jesse James beads together and really make this a fun statement piece for the fall. And I'm using really great fall colors. So how can you go wrong, right? Okay, I'm gonna turn the video around real quick and I'm gonna hold you guys here for a second real quick before I get into my spiel for the evening um, I wanted to talk about a very important thing coming up that is the silver silk anniversary um, workshop week huge deal this is something that I've wanted to do for a little bit of uh, well a, a longer time span but um, I thought that, you know, this this was a good excuse and um, I wanted to make sure that it was a it was going to be a bigger event and really well thought out and planned. And so I've got a really great kit that I'm going to put out with all these different um, designs that we're going to do together. And this workshop is private. It's not going to be available to everybody. It is um, during the week of I think it's the third week of December. And so it'll be a good time, I think, for all of us to get together because it is holiday season. And I think it's just more fun to share it with you guys. And my anniversary is on that date for owning Silver Silk for two years, which is unbelievable. And so um, why not do this together? I'm already 60% sold out of the kits, believe it or not. So 60% of the seats are already taken up, um, which is pretty major. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen so quickly. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's great. And I've got some really great guests that are going to be on, um, during this week as well. So Monday I've got Jill Wiseman. So here it's a special guest, but, um, these are all filled in, um, at this point. And then we are doing a jewelry photography lesson in the evening for Tuesday. This will be really fun. I took a poll with you guys in the Silkies group and um, you guys wanted to know how I took photos. And so this will be a great way to uncover some of those mysteries and um, show you my process. And then we've got a make and learn with Laura Scott from Webbers on Wednesday, Thursday. We've got Softflex Wire. Um, they are joining me on my actual date, which is Thursday for, um, again, the week of, in that week of December 14 through 18. Um, so they'll be there for our hot cocoa toast that we'll do in the evening. And then um, Friday, I'm being joined by uh, Juliana from Jewel Loom, actually. And so we're going to be doing um, a project together. So the kit for this event covers the daytime, excuse me, the daytime projects, which are these top ones here. You'll get all the materials that you'll need um, to complete each of those projects. You'll have access to the group and you'll have access to all of this extra bonus material for this full week. Um, so pre-sale kits are now happening again, um, almost, well, around 60% sold out already. This price lasts until the end of this month and then, um, the original price kicks in. So you'll want to grab it while you can. Okay, 
tonight's project. So I am going to be using hollow mesh. This is a phenomenal material that I got to revamp, remake, redo everything with. And um, this is what it looks like up close. So it's just a larger knit than what we're used to seeing that would be on the capture chain. So this allows it to really be filled in with some bigger beads, um, up to size uh, three millimeter, in fact. And um, this wasn't available to do before on the previous iteration of Hollow Mesh. So this is pretty phenomenal, I think. And um, tonight, especially, I wanted to again um, revisit using cord, using leather cord. And so I've got another color, because last week, if you guys remember where I put that, we used um, this turquoise color in our mesh. And, um, you know, this I think would make a great fall or spring color personally, but I wanted to um, kind of do a different color for the evening. And so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna pick up my mustard color because I really love this mustard. And I thought I would try it with the silver color as uh, my palette for the evening. Mixed in with um, some purples, in fact, I saw M just pop in a minute ago. So I'm gonna be using some purple beads so not quite the hollow mesh yet, but <laughs> I did manage to squeeze in some purple for you. Um, hey, Mary. Hey, Catherine uh, from Australia. Nice to have you here. I'm, I'm glad you could join in. Uh, yeah, so, okay. I need to sketch out my design. Um, but this is available in different colors. I've got gold. I've got copper. I've got purple, black, um, silver. So... Got a pretty good stock on um, some of the hollow mesh so far. But here's the basic shape of my design that I wanted to do for tonight. Uh, this is going to be the leather and I'm gonna bring up my hollow mesh all the way up. So this will be leather with mesh. And I, I love what this is gonna transform the color into. I think it's gonna make it a lot lighter than the mustard it currently is. We'll run it through the draw plate so that the hollow mesh conforms around the, um, uh, around the three millimeter leather mesh pretty well. Oh, Laura, I'm so sorry. It's smoky, smoky in Oregon right now. I know how difficult that is right now. Um, and I'm hoping and sending all of my good thoughts uh, your way and my friends in California certainly too. So um, I'll be thinking about you guys. Hey, Vicky, uh, I'm glad you love the hollow mesh. So down here, I wanted to kind of draw in some other colors. So what I have, and I'm sure a lot of you all probably might have, is um, some embroidery floss. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was like I was basically digging through all of my craft material, right? And so I was like, okay, I've got this embroidery floss that's been sitting around here for a hundred years, and I need to do something with it, right? So um, I went ahead and came up with some really fun little tassels that we can make together. And I could use the rest of this to wrap around um, the sort of the focal area of my leather cord here. So that's what I think I'll do for this evening. Um, we're gonna do this as wrap uh, embroidery floss. Again, just quick little notes. Um, I really like this rose color. I think it pairs well with the leather cord. In fact, um, it just has a really nice fall feel to it. So uh, what I want to do here is a Jesse James bead of some sort. I found a color mix that I think will go well between what that rose color of the embroidery floss is and this leather mesh. So how about that? And I know if I've got a stash, you guys have a big stash too. <laughs> then that, I'm sure you could find the right color too. So, uh, and if you'll notice, this has gold at the top too. So I actually found some bead caps that we can use to cover that gold up um, instead of having to paint it. And then we'll probably try and draw out some mustard with uh, some other accent color beads here. Oops, I have this, um, I think this is coconut and we can kind of use that to, I don't know, brighten up our palette a little bit. Um, so we'll put beads here. And then this is our self-made tassel. It's gonna be a super duper tassel, in fact, because I have a triple strand end cap. And what I thought we could do is create some tassels 
that look like this, and we're going to actually insert it into our triple strand end cap so that this becomes a super duper mega big tassel <laughs> that we can um, put as, the, as our main focal for um, this particular necklace. See, didn't I tell you guys I was a little extra? I think that's gonna be so much fun. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to show you how to make those tassels here in a minute, but let's go ahead and get the structure of our main design done first. Okay, so I just have this hollow mesh and I just have um, some three millimeter leather cord. And so I am going to go ahead and just stuff it right through. This is so easy to do um, and so much fun because of the instant gratification. Oh, M says that is way cool. I am pretty excited about this tutorial. It kind of hit me yet again at the last minute. Um, you wouldn't believe what kind of a week it's been <laughs> already for me. And it's only a Tuesday, but my day job is heck hella busy um, with me doing a lot of video work this time around rather than doing more print work for my graphic design position. Um, but they got me on the video kick right now, which I love doing, but it is, it is very time consuming. Um, so this is a huge stress relief, might I add, <laughs> to my day. But, um, and I get to spend it with you guys and make something cool. But these ideas kind of just end up hitting me at the last minute. And I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I think it'll be fun. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Ooh, some silver cup chain would be really cool too. That's a good idea for a future tutorial. I haven't tried cup chain before because it has the brass backing on one side, but I'm wondering if I maybe double it or send in a few smaller strands and kind of twist them around inside of the uh, inside of the hollow mesh. That might be kind of cool. Uh, Mimi is asking, are you still working from home? Yes, ma'am, permanently now. Um, so this way it allows me to focus on my business with Silver Silk as well as um, complete the tasks that I need to efficiently for my day job. And both are equal, my equal passions in life. And so it's, I don't really want to sacrifice one or the other, um, especially since Silver Silk has so much more momentum than it had before. And so um, I got very lucky and I got to stay home and just work from home and connect with my peers um, online as on a you know, as needed basis. I think what I did last time was I passed it through the four millimeter. Let's see. Um, for those of you who don't know what this is, it's a draw plate. This is a acrylic one. I just today ordered a um, metal one because I sometimes have to draw the chain over the ball chain just to make it a little bit more form fitting. And what I've noticed is that my the inside of my three millimeter which is what i normally pass it through you can kind of see that's kind of wearing out and that's because of the metal that is filing away some of the acrylic um of this draw plate so it, what it's doing is it's making that hole bigger and that's not what i want it to do i want it to remain the same um, permanently and so I just ordered a metal one. I will review it, um, show you guys what I do with it here on the videos, and um, that way you'll know which one you probably might wanna get. So, um, but as I'm passing this through, you could see how what I said earlier about forming right on that leather um, cord just perfectly. Um, it is very, very form-fitting and very, it's hugging it quite well, um, even just through drawing it through the four millimeter um, spot on this particular draw plate, but here's what it looks like before. And then whenever I pass it through, it looks like that. So no gaps and no loose ends there. So that's kind of nice. So I'll just go ahead and draw it all the way through. And then I'm gonna trim it here at the end. Where's my tools? Oh, there we go. Okay, I have a pair of, I think these are Lindstrom cutters. I've actually been really liking these lately. They're really tiny for my baby hands <laughs> that I have. Um, so I just, I think I just enjoy holding them. Okay, so here it is. Uh, and again, it just really lightened up that color and added this intricacy that I didn't have before to this leather cord, which is really cool. Okay, so, um, Normally, I would have a pair of end caps ready to cap this off. 
I actually ran out after my last order today of um, whoever took my, I can't remember who the person was, but that lucky person got the last of my end caps. <laughs> so fresh out of the single strand, but it'll be all replenished in October, I promise. Um, but continuing on, we're going to focus on the bottom part of this. So what I wanted to do was wrap um, some of this extra embroidery floss around the center part of my design here. But before I do that, I wanted to show you guys, hopefully I'll have enough left over. And if not, um, I do have some wax cord, which will work pretty much the same um, if, if I ran out, if I run out of extra floss here. But I'm gonna show you guys how to make that tassel that I mentioned earlier. And then we could put um, our component together. Actually, let's do that first. So you'll want one of my business cards or a thick business card. Um, so little did you guys know that if you received one of these in one of your orders, you'd actually be getting a tool that you didn't know you needed. Um, but I like to use this. It's, it's, it's just a nice sturdy card and um, easy to work with. So what I've done is I've just taken my embroidery floss and I've just wrapped it around basically 12 times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then I'll just simply trim it off. And then I'm going to trim off a little bit of extra. We'll say about maybe four inches or so. And then I'm going to pass it underneath through my bunch of, um, or my wrapped floss there, and I'm gonna pull it up, just like that. Okay, and then simply here, I'll just tie it into a square knot, and I wanna make sure to, that I hang on to both of those pieces, because that's what I'm gonna be using to make my secure knot um, after this step. So we'll do one knot, and I'll do another one. Hey, Gloria, thanks for joining in. Hey, Becky. It is a beautiful color thread. Um, I really, really dig this color. It's sort of a dark burgundy rose color. Okay, so once I've tied it a couple times, I can go in and actually um, cut this off. So I'll just cut off all of it. So instantly, as you can see, I've got a tassel, but we're not done yet because you could see that this is very um, clumped in its current state. So let me show you guys what to do if that's the case, um, in which if you use embroidery floss, it definitely is. So I have here some water and I'm just gonna dunk this in because what it's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna take out all of those wrinkles that I've had since it's been folded on the card all this time. And um, this will also loosen the fibers in order for me to comb it, okay? So you just dump it, put it off to the side here, and then what I do is I grab a comb, um, and I have one here that has a, you know smaller teeth all the way to the larger one. I just start to kind of comb it out with the larger one, and then I'll go in and I'll start to separate those strands with the finer teeth of the comb. And you'll want to brush it in all the directions. If a little bit comes out, that's quite all right. Sometimes that happens with embroidery floss. Okay, and you'll notice that your tassel will start to fluff up once you start to pull it. There we go. So that is a great way to make a quick little tassel. You'll just let this dry and this is what you end up with um, right over here. Once that tassel dries, you can definitely uh, make your little secure knot up here. The reason you want a bigger knot is that because um, this particular finding, which is what we'll secure it with, it has teeth inside of it. This is used to crimp our normal capture chain, which, um, here, let me grab an example. Uh, capture chain is this item right here. It's got a ball chain inside uh, as a core for this knitted wire. And these findings have little teeth inside of them, so it grasps onto the ball chain. That, that way you don't have to have any glue or any special, um, I guess, fixins to <laughs> crimp this, um, no tools or anything. And so what we wanna do is replicate that ball with our extra 
thread here. So what I did was I just went close to my tassel and I just knotted it a few times. This will help to bulk up that little extra knot there. And um, that's what's going to hold inside of our find inside of our finding. There we go. So after you've done that, you can just trim off this top part here. There we go. And then you're basically ready to go. So let's put this to the test. Oh, I forgot one other step, you guys. When your tassel dries, you'll get these little frayed ends that are mix matched. So just go through and just trim it off even. Um, and that way you'll have a nice even tassel here at the end. Okay. So um, let's grab our tassels. Look how beautiful these are. Okay. I'm loving this. I get all giddy um, when things work. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab a pair of my favorite new Weber's pliers. Laura Scott hooked me up and gave me some really great tools to work with here, so you guys. So, speaking of Weber's, because I'm a huge fan and because Laura's a huge fan of Silver Silk, Laura and Patty, both are actually, um, you can grab some tools from Weber's. 10% off, um, if you type in Silver Silk 10 at checkout, you'll wanna go to weberstools.com. Little quick shout out there to Weber's. Love them. Alrighty. So now I'm just going to feed everything through. If my finding is a little too small in its opening, I'm going to grab another plier here. Um, some chain nose pliers. And I'm just going to put it into my opening and just kind of press up, uh, press this out. So that opens up my finding just a little bit more. Okay, now I'll carefully slip these guys in. Hoping that my knot is gonna be big enough to hold. Ooh, look at that. It's all sturdy and staying, thank goodness. Um, but wow, I just have like a nice, like really high end looking finished tassel here. Now I do need to go back and trim the bottom of this cause it is uneven and I'm very OCD like that. So let me go and do that real quick while we're all here. A little haircut, no big deal. But really, like, show of hands, you guys, how many of you have embroidery floss at home? <laughs> if, you're a cra if you're a true crafter and obsessed and hoard like all crafters do with supplies, um, I know you probably have some out there. Let me toss this in the garbage. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with the result of this. I think it looks quite, um, quite rich, you know? So... Let me put these tools off to the side here. These are all like household items. Like who doesn't have a comb, right? Um, and a, you know, a little bit of water and some embroidery floss and you've got magic. Well, you gotta have the silver silk findings too, of course. Okay, let's assemble the rest of our piece here. So we've got um, this beautiful little bead that I think will bring out both the mustard and the plum colors. That's not gonna sit still, so okay. What I'm gonna do is grab some 20 gauge craft wire. This will be used for um, our bead. We'll do a quick little wire wrap to secure it. So let's see, where are my handy dandy cutters? There we go. <laughs> Vicky says, I do have some. Have you, uh, have you peeked into my craft, craft, craft room maybe? Um, that's, you know what, that brings up a good point though. I wonder, uh, Softlex had this campaign going on to show your craft space for a little wire, a little wire, <laughs> a little wire, a little while, excuse me. 
And um, it was kind of interesting to see what everyone, you know, what sort of space they worked in. So I thought that was really a neat idea. Okay, so there we go. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that this hole for this bead is gigantic. So I just use some three millimeter beads. I think these are either three or four to line my bead with. And then that way it doesn't move around or shift or anything while it's inside of um, this particular, or between the cones here. So that'll be perfect. Okay, so what I wanna do at one end, oh, by the way, I also forgot, I wanted to add my extra little beads here to bring out another pop of color. I actually don't hate that yellow. I think it'll be a nice addition to this. Now, beyond this, I don't think I could add any more colors because then it starts to conflict with my palette. So we'll keep it simple. And this looks really good to me. So now the question is, is do we want to do a wrap loop or a simple loop? And I've got all this extra wire, so let's do a wrap loop real quick. What I'm going to do is, while well, I'm carefully holding all this together, probably should have done this before um, I strung everything, but that's all right. I'm just going to create a perpendicular angle just like that. And um, I'm gonna have plenty of wire here to work with, about two inches. I'm gonna grasp that angle with my round nose pliers. The longer you go into, or I guess the deeper you go into your round nose pliers, the um, thicker and bigger that loop will become. So for our, because I think I wanna pass it right through this, um, I'm probably gonna need a bigger pair of pliers, in fact, because I don't think I don't know if that'll work um, for that particularly. We could try. I guess there's no harm in trying, right? Let's go at the very bottom part of the loop, or part of the pliers here and to make our loop. So I'm just forming right around and making sure that I sculpt around the pliers so that already, um, as you can see, I've got that nice little, whoops, I've got that nice little bend in my, um, in my wire there. And then this one just kind of comes back down where it was before. This is a good time to test if this is gonna fit right through and it looks like it does. So we're in good shape, so to speak. Okay, I'm gonna take the rest of the wire and I'm just gonna go ahead and fold and wrap the stem of my little wire wrap part here. That looks really good. I just kind of um, branched out a little bit here at the last part of this loop. So we can actually go back in and just adjust as we need to, to make sure that they're nice even coils. And then what I'll do is I will trim at an angle and then I'll go back and tuck if I need to. There we go. And boom, you've got a instant, easy little uh, dangle. Okay, and same thing on this side. I'm actually just gonna grasp it close to the last bead. I'm gonna go in to where it's close to two to three millimeters in length, and that's where I'll create my bend. So as you could see, whenever I remove my pliers now, I have got that extra little space to make my coils. Okay, same. Same deal here, you'll just go in. If you can't quite go in all the way into, you see how that bead is blocking my ability to go into it anymore? What I do is I just start at where that bead is, or as far as I can go in, and then I just kind of form the whole thing around halfway up, and then I can form the rest of my wire around. So that's a little bit of a, I guess a quick way to get around it. Okay, if your loop is off, which it looks like mine is, I'm not really quite as happy with that. I can go in my pliers and just kind of reform everything and push and pull as I need to. Lucky for us, this soft flex craft wire is very easy to handle and adjust. If it's still not quite perfect, which as you can see, mine isn't, I say it's just as easy to undo. And I get to use another tool. Ooh. 
my nylon jaw pliers. So what I can do is just kind of straighten this out and start again. Sometimes that happens, no big deal. But you gotta have the right tools and you gotta have the perfect executed technique, right? Hey, Lena, I'm so glad you could join in. Okay, let's do this again. Oh, so much better. It was worth taking that extra time just to make sure that it's perfect. Okay, um, before I connect it, I wanna connect it to my tassel. So I won't wrap around just immediately, or not yet, just immediately. I'm gonna actually um, go ahead and connect and attach my tassel in there. And then I'll go back in and go ahead and coil this around. Here we go. Just twice, because that's what I want, uh, that's what I have to match up here. So that looks really good. My loop is nice and round, so I'm just gonna trim this off again at an angle. You can see that I've got a nice sharp point. Hopefully you guys can see that in my wire. So that will just tuck in quite nicely. Um, into my coil there. So now I wanna make sure that my loops are facing the same direction. And then I can simply just string this on. Now, earlier I had mentioned that maybe I wanted to wrap um, some extra cording or something around this. So let me see if I could still do that. Oh, that looks really pretty though, doesn't it? <laughs> I could really just end it there and call it good. But why do that when you could do extra? <laughs> okay, so let's see if I remember this technique correctly. To do this, you will want to um, have a bunch of cord. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to execute the technique that I want to, but I can do a workaround, no big deal. Sometimes that's what it's about. If you can't always execute your um, preferred technique, then it's always good to think of a clever way to kind of reformat it from there. But what I think I can do is I could literally just wrap this around and around. And this will provide an extra color and texture because I love the extra to my design. There we go. This will be pretty good. And it looks like I'll just have exactly the thread I'll need to make this work. But as you can see, I'm carrying the colors from my tassel pendant all the way to the necklace rope. Therefore, it's a lot more cohesive of a design. Hey, Tina, I'm so glad you could join in. Um, I just shipped out your package today and dropped it off in the mailbox. And so you should receive it here soon. Um, and then as well as your anniversary ticket which I believe you're already part of the members, um, our private little group. So I don't think much work needs to be done there <laughs> on your end. All right, this is coming along pretty well. And I'm thinking that I could actually probably sew this um, maybe with a bigger needle if I could find one, if I can't secure it exactly the way that I want to through the knitted part of this mesh. That way I know it's going to be 100% secure. Look at that. It's just a cool little extra wrap. If you wanted to do a wrap bracelet with different textures, like what a cool way to do this. There 
All right. So you basically just spin this around and it coils on itself and super easy to do. There we go. I'm almost, I'm actually happy that I can use up a lot of this embroidery flask. because it, Literally, it's been sitting there for at least, oh gosh, I think 12, maybe 15 years. Um, that is whenever I was really little. Um, we're talking like, I think 13. I did like to do cross stitch at that point in time. And um, yeah, I had all this, I had worked on a larger project, which I don't know what happened to it, sadly, but I had all this thread left over. Um, and so I've sort of been needing excuses to use it up. I don't like to throw it away because, you know, here we are with crafting, but um, yeah, finding some clever uses to do projects with. So I don't really know how far I need to go here. Really, I should have probably gone the other way, but, and this might be pretty good. Now that I'm looking at it. So, and of course you can always, you know, measure and kind of take this out and see what feels right. Oh, that looks so good. It's definitely more punchier than it was before. Whereas if I had just strung it on, I don't think it would have been the same effect. So let me go ahead and wrap this a few more times. And then we'll secure it. So to secure this, I'm just going to actually slip this into itself a few times. And I think that'll be pretty secure. You can always dab a little glue on there, no big deal. If you've got some E6000 handy or some super glue, like that'll hold the, uh, this fiber pretty good, which I think I'll probably do after the show, in fact, because I want this to be super secure. I'll do this one more time. <laughs> Paula says, never throw the little bits away. It's so true, you never know when they'll come in handy. Okay, that looks really good. It's holding very well. So I'm just going to trim it. I'm gonna leave a little extra because after I have put my glue on and let it dry and there's still some little fiber sticking out, then I'll cut it away for sure. But I just want that extra little bit there for now um, to keep it nice and secure. But you guys, we made a project tonight. Oh, and it all works and fits correctly. <laughs> really anything that one can, this is all that one can hope for. So let me try and slip this down to the middle. There we go. Ah, oh, that is so pretty and it was so easy to do. If your tassel does, you know, maybe land at the bottom of your jewelry, um, your jewelry drawer, then, and it gets kind of crinkled and, you know, kind of gets that weird texture again, just dip it back in some water and let it air dry. And um, the tassel will instantly kind of iron out itself. And um, I don't know, return back to this, its normal gorgeous self. So, all right. You could always also, if you wanted to extra embellish, which I think, you know what, we're all here. Let's just do it, right? I was thinking that it'd be cool to do some silver caps on this somehow. So I think this wire might be a little too thick. So let's try the 26 gauge and see where we land with that. Uh, here we are. Because it looks a little, it's like almost there, but not really. You know what I mean? Um, just It's just missing something extra. Looks a little unfinished. So what I'm thinking I can do is just take some 26 gauge wire And I'm gonna cut about a foot off for one side. And I'm gonna sew it through the knit part, which is a really cool thing you can do with silver silk <laughs> and only with silver silk, really. And then I'm going to just um, do a quick little wrap. It could be a messy wrap. It could be a very clean wrap. I will leave that up to you guys in whatever you wanna do. 
I will say the messy wrap is the most easiest to do though. More so than the clean wrap. <laughs> if you're super perfect with your wrapping, then I highly suggest it. But I think I'm not always good with my wrapping, um, as you can see. And so I probably will settle on the messier wrap. But maybe there's a happy medium. Maybe if I go back over it, I do just a nice clean, kind of looks like a little bead with texture on it. And I think it, it will kind of just finish out and introduce this wire part of the knitted wire a little bit better. Uh, pretty cool. All right, we're doing it. Usually you could tuck it back into some of those wires and it'll uh, stay pretty securely there. This one I'm just gonna trim off. So you guys can kind of see what I mean now. It was just kind of missing something there that needed to be there. Well, there we go. So let me go ahead and do the same to the other side here. Twenty. Aw, Ramona says, great job, Nilay. I don't get here much, but I wanted, uh, I want to thank you for sharing your talent. I appreciate that. My talent and my evening is better well spent with you guys. I always enjoy it. Um, it's very relaxing for me, and I hope it is for you guys too. One more piece here. And as I said earlier, um, I wish I had some end caps, but sadly, I have. you guys have bought all the last ones that I had, believe it or not. <laughs> How dare you shop at my store? <laughs> um, I, I have a larger order put in for October that is going to be quite a hefty order, in fact, um, that will replenish all of my other findings and stuff. And so um, I hope you guys will hang tight as I procure those and get them in and get them um, inventoried and stuff. All of the boring paperwork part of it, but um, it'll be, it'll all be there soon again. It'll be a lot of doubles and single end, end caps for sure. Since those tend to seem, those tend to be the most popular ones. Okay, so we are wrapping the part of this. There we go. And I just went ahead and wrapped my other end around there just to keep it nice and bulked up with wire. Cool, that looks really good to me. I'm actually just gonna trim this off. And then tuck that in on both ends here. Perfect. All right. That looks really good. I'm actually gonna go grab my little bust buddy here and uh, see if I can string it on there to show you guys what we made this evening. I'm very proud of this piece. I definitely love it a lot. So let me hang it up here real quick and it'll give you an idea of what it looks like with, um, with a neck. So let me flip you guys around. All right. And check out what we made. This is pretty cool. Woo, there it is. Isn't it just simply gorgeous with this big tassel statement? You've got the silver silk finding, triple strand end cap, another use for it, by the way. Um, I thought it was super innovative. I love the detail on the cord, the three millimeter leather cord. Um, and we've got our little silver wire wrapped cap there, our cord. So there's like a lot of stuff working here, but it's working harmoniously together. I'm a huge mixed media person. I, I hope you guys are. Um, I love experimenting and trying different things. And anything that you add to a design, just I would say be careful to edit to make sure that it makes sense. 
to be thoughtful of why you're using a specific color and a placement or, you know, what texture here makes sense and how can I break up where it's shiny with something a little matte or how can I break up something that's super wiry with something soft. Um, so I hope you can have these as extra takeaways from this video. And um, I thought we made a really fun fall piece tonight. And I am curious to see who's gonna receive that actually, because I've been giving away my jewelry like crazy lately. <laughs> um, but yeah, check out um, the anniversary party, you guys. Full week, December 14 through 18. I apologize, this is backwards. Um, 14 through 18th, a huge workshop that I'm doing to celebrate my two years at Silver Silk. It is growing substantially. The, the amount of creators that we have and, and su loyal supporters of Silver Silk has grown as well. And um, I hope you guys will join me. It'll be a massive, well-designed kit because I have full control over it. And you know it's gonna be great. Um, and it's gonna be a lot of guests that are gonna pop in in the evening time. We'll be making projects. It's gonna be a really fun week. Um, otherwise, you can check out this hollow mesh. You'll feel go to www.silversilkonline.com. Plenty of hollow mesh there. I'm getting ready to restock, replenish, and um, maybe even get some more colors in by next week uh, if things go smoothly, <laughs> time-wise. Right now, I've only got five colors, so could you imagine? Uh, and I've got like, I think 15 different colors of wire now that are in bulk spool form. So there's lots, lots of work to be done. Um, check out the Silkies group, you guys. There's a huge group of us crazy silks <laughs> out there <laughs> that love to create and love to post pictures of our design and create this fabulous community. Um, you'll be welcomed by Teresa, our brand ambassador. And um, she is great to say hello, to, to get us talking, to share what's going on in our weekend. So I really appreciate Teresa and I can tell you guys do too, um, for those of you that are in our group. Um, you know, just spreading good vibes, more importantly. Um, where else am I? I'm on Pinterest, Instagram, uh, Facebook, of course. YouTube, if you're on YouTube, you can find a ton of my tutorials. And um, while you're there, please like and subscribe those videos. Uh, but otherwise, Tuesday, every Tuesday at 5.30 in the evening time, central time that is, so that's 6.30 Eastern time, or if you're on the, uh, over at the other coast of, of the U.S., <laughs> then um, 3.30. And um, you can find me doing, doing some stuff here, making stuff, <laughs> teaching you guys some new ideas. All right, it has been a fabulous evening. Uh, I am going to, I think, get back to work, um, knitting away some wire, and I will catch you guys again here soon. Uh, Mary says thanks and congrats to two years. Thank you, Mary. And uh, I need to read back through some of these comments before I go off for the night. Uh, Yolanda says happy anniversary. Thank you. I can't believe it's almost going to be December here soon. <laughs> Grace says thinking uh, or adding sake to the start of a poor design. <laughs> Grace, I think you'll have it under control. Your first name says it, right? Uh, Becky says, pretty cool job. So thank you guys for the lovely comments. Very encouraging. And I love all of you. All right. Have a good evening.